And and we're live. And we're live for episode 30 of Slap Happy. That's right. I'm here. I'm doing it. We're doing it. We're doing it together. Um, my name is Civilian. I'm the host of Slap Happy. Thank you for tuning in. Um, I appreciate you being here. I appreciate you giving me your time. And uh, yeah, just showing gratitude every day for y'all motherfuckers because you don't have to be here and I'm glad that you are. Um, look, man, I just uh, I had a bit of an interesting um, moment arise the other day where um, I basically, there was a meme going around of uh, Be- uh, Glad- Gladys uh, Berejiklian um, just before the Origin one, she was standing kind of there with an unopened can of Coke uh, like four hours before the game kicked off saying, you know, ready for the game or whatever. And then everyone just started pasting it everywhere. I joined in. I pasted it over a, a couple of photos saying that she was in the crowd at one of my shows. Um, and then, yeah, one of them happened to be this uh, show that I uh, went to and uh, with uh, Seth Sentry and Pez and, and Dielectrics. Anyway, I posted that as a meme and a lot of people kind of like had a bit of a laugh about it but also were like, holy shit, that's pretty cool that you're on stage with those guys. And um, yeah, it just took me back down memory lane. It's something that um, it's, it, it's, a, it's a bit of a fun story. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell the story here today and this is, this is that time that I freestyle. This is that time that I freestyled on stage with Seth Sentry and P. Easy. All right, let's go. So it was um, take me back maybe t- 2014 ish, 2015. I'm living in Newtown. Okay, um, I'm going to a lot of hip hop gigs. So I moved out of home. I'm 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 cruising around the city. I'm like maybe 24, 25. Uh, cruising around the city, going to a lot of hip hop gigs. I'm working at a um, at a bottle shop in North Sydney, and um, every single week I would go to shows. I'd go to like, ah, man, I'd, I'd I'd go to all the big village shows in the inner west. I would go to, I'd, I'd go to the Darling Harbour for shows. I'd go to um, Enmore Theatre. I'd go to Metro. I'd go and anywhere there was a show, I was I I just loved it. I'd go out every single night. I'd go to shows by myself. I'd go to poetry slams. I'd go to um, galleries. I'd go, I just loved it. I was always out and about trying to trying to check out music, trying to get amongst the culture, trying to enrich myself. You know. Um, so yeah, this is this is kind of the setting the scene of like where I was at and what I was doing and, and I was just loving live music, especially hip hop. I would love to get to all the shows. I'd buy some merch. I'd hang out with artists, you know, kick it for a little bit. And um, this one evening, my friend at the time, Lou, um, she sends me a, a message. I'm at work during the day. This is like, I think it was like a Wednesday night. She sends me this message and she, she, go, she goes to me, hey, um, uh, there's a there's a bar kind of launching tonight, Rolling Stone Lounge in um I think it was at the end of Oxford Oxford Street. Yeah. Um they're doing like a little bit of a soft launch kind of thing where they're basically inviting, they're giving away free tickets, I think 50 free tickets. And then the rest of the people that were going to be there were, were stakeholders and and uh sponsors and stuff like that. And it was to a free so it was 50 free tickets to a show that included Seth Century. Pez and Dielectrics, right? And this is in, yeah, as I said, 2014. So Pez is hot. Pez is still hot. You know, not as hot, but Pez is still hot. Um, Seth Sentry, uh, you know, very hot. Dielectrics, still pretty hot. So, you know, these these guys are three like big hip-hop acts in this country and they're playing all on the one night in a little bar for free. I mean, you know, you had me at fucking hello. <laughs> anyway, so I'm like, yeah, get me, get me in the door, get me in the door. So she sends me the link. I, I get the free tickets, or maybe she got them. I'm not sure, but um, I'd been working all day, and I didn't want to, I didn't want to like go, you know, at this job. I was kind of like running around doing, doing, you know, I was slugging away during the day, like throwing cartons of beer around and stuff like that. So I was quite sweaty. I didn't want to go to this gig, uh, and mingle 
with the, with those clothes on. So straight after work, I, I ran to like a local store, just cop some like um, chinos, a, a, a fresh white tea. So I could at least kind of like have a bit of steeze about me, you know. Uh, I'm going to meet a couple of my idols potentially. So I want to I want to look good. I want to look good. So that's what I did. Anyway, we get to the show like six, seven o'clock kind of thing. Anyway, um, Dielectrics goes first, and and this is a this is a small gig. This is an intimate gig. You know, max a hundred people are in this room, and um, and I'm you know I'm standing I'm standing like at the front of this tiny stage. It's a fairly small stage at the side at the at the at the time, um, and I, I'm standing at the front of it, and you know we're we're kind of looking straight up at the guys who are performing. They're like within a foot of us, you know, a super, super front row, super intimate stuff. Anyway, Dielectrics goes first. Uh, Dielectrics, for anyone who doesn't know who Dielectric, Dielectrics is, he's one of the best technical double time rappers in this country that I know of. Um, yeah, just super, super talented uh, hip hop artist. I don't know if he's still making music, but he, he, at the time, he was highly regarded as a as a super intricate, um, yeah, technical hip hop artist, uh, uh, like a real, real lyricist. You know, um, he he went up first. He did his thing. Uh, it was hectic, right? And he had a DJ called uh, DJ Two Buck. Um, anyway, so he did his thing, and then Pez gets up. Pez Pez does his little rap thing, and then it gets to Seth. All right, Seth is uh, probably the the top dog at the time, so he got gets a little headline act uh, spot. So Seth gets up to do his set, okay. And um, at the time when when Seth was touring, he would do this. He would have this like little moment in the middle of his show. So Seth always, I was, I always appreciated him because of his theatrics. When he would play shows, he'd he'd have like a full set crafted out where he'd do like things with you know the hoverboard and and these little freestyles and and these you know he'd he'd have all these like little things set up in the in the set to kind of make it more interesting and more dynamic and more accessible to his his you know fans. Um, and yeah, he had this one thing at the time. I don't know if he still does it, but he was doing this thing where like halfway through the set. Um, his DJ um, Sizzle would would put on this um, I don't know this like old school tune sample and 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 it just kind of play out for a little while and it was just like it just play on loop and he would kind of like start garnering the crowd he'd be like all right if you got anything throw it up at me throw it up at me I'm gonna freestyle about you know some shit that you got and what he would usually do is he'd get the other acts on the bill uh, that had opened up or whatever to jump up. And, and they all pass four bars around. Now, when he went to grab Pez and Dielectrics, Dielectrics had actually gone home sick. He was not well. He performed and then left basically. So it was just Seth and Pez. And because, I mean, they could have just done it them too. Seth could have done it himself. They're both great freestyle rappers, but um, they wanted someone else up on the stage. So Seth casually goes to the crowd. Hey, is uh, we got any rappers in the house? We got any rappers in the house? And... um. You know, I remember there's there's like a guy to the right who kind of like all his friends are pointing at him, or I think yeah, all his friends are pointing at him, and and they're like, and Seth's like, oh, you're a rapper? Oh well, you know, and he's like, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not. Uh, anyway, so he's kind of he him and he he kind of turns to Pez, thinking that you know, you know, what's what are the chances that there's actually a rapper in the house tonight at this very moment? You know, what are the chances? So, you know, nowadays there'd be fucking you know, if you went to a hip hop show and you put, and you said, "Are there any rappers in the house?" Ninety out of a hundred people would be like, "I'm a fucking rapper. You want to hear my bars, G?" Um, but you know, at the time, you know, one one many of us, um, you know, especially at such an intimate gig on a Wednesday night. Um, anyway, so he he goes, you know, any rappers in the house? I was very hesitant at first because. I don't consider myself a very good freestyle rapper, right? Um, and especially not in a situation like that where, you know, two two guys who I look up to and respect are on the stage. Like I, I, I was fearful of fucking up, like admittedly. Um, but 
my friend Lou kind of like poked me and she's like, fucking, you know, put your hand up, put your hand up, say something, do something, do something, you know, be a man, stand up. And, um, and I thought, well, well, uh, you know, and, 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 and they were having, they get, I think they gave away like some free drinks there or something. Um, and I'd, and I'd had like maybe one or two drinks more than what was required to allow me to not get on the stage. So I'd had just over that quota. So that meant that I was like kind of warmed up. I was ready to go kind of thing, you know? So it kind of tipped me over the edge and I'm, and I'm just like, I'm, I'm literally the first person in the crowd and I just stick my hand up like this. And, and Seth and Pez are like in the background, they're chit-chatting, they're trying to figure out what they're going to do kind of thing. And, and, and Seth kind of turns around and he sees me with my hand up and he goes, oh, oh you're a rapper? Oh, you're a rapper? All right, well, g- give me one bar, give me one bar. And, and then he kind of goes to the crowd, you know, that's the quality control we have here. We only ask people to do one bar. Oh, no, he says that afterward. Anyway, he goes, give me one bar then. And he puts the mic down to my uh, face and I, <laughs> I, 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 like, I literally could have said anything. I could have been like, yo, um, I got feet and, you know, in, in summer you feel heat. And he would have been like, yep, yeah, done. Get on the stage. Um, but I went to go, um, I went to, I, I, I kind of froze. I was starting to freeze and, and I went into my vault and I'm like, all right, come on, Matt, come up with something, come up with something. And I, and I thought of the first line of a song that I just put out a couple of years ago and it was called G'day. And the first line is, um, G'day, ladies and gentlemen, even children. I'm not a John, any man call me civilian, right? That's the, that's the actual line of the song. And he puts the mic to my face and I'm like, all right, I'll just say this line from one of my songs and he'll think like I just freestyled that and, you know, he'll be like fucking sick, can't get up on stage, let's do this. Anyway, he puts a mic to my face and I go, g'day, ladies and gentlemen, even children. Uh, and, and, and my brain starts like fucking freezing and I'm like, holy shit, say something. Uh, and, um, and I'm here to break the building. What? I'm here to break the fucking building? You kidding, Matt? This is your time to shine, and you and you're talking about going Hulk mania on this motherfucker. You're talking about breaking a building in this motherfucker. What? Anyway, that's what I came up with. But you know what? He didn't have any other options at the time, so he's like, "Do you know what, kid? Get up on stage. That's the quality control we have around these parts." He brings me up on stage. He goes, "What's your name?" I go, "Sav, civilian." He goes, "Civilian? That's your that's your rap name?" And I'm like. Yes, sir. Let's do this. Anyway, he, 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 he turns back to the crowd. All right, crowd, we'll throw us some stuff and we'll freestyle about it. So the crowd start throwing things, right? And um, <clears throat> I'm standing there. I'm like, uh, uh, holy shit, what's going on? There's Pez. There's Seth. There's Pez again. Oh, my God. There's Pez. There's Seth. Seth is there. Pez is there. I'm here. We're all here. Are we a, is this a, are we a group? Is this a boy band? What are we doing? Are we friends? Is this friends? You friend? We friend? I don't know. I'm so confused. But anyway, I'm like, all right, I gotta, I'm probably going to have to start rapping soon. So anyway, I kinda, we're, we're, we're kind of walking around the stage, you know, picking up some shit that people are throwing because we're about to start freestyling. This loop is still going. Uh, Sizzle's still got the thing looping. Um, and they're basically waiting for more stuff to get on stage so they can start the, you know, the act. I jokingly say uh, underwear, <laughs> you know, trying to be sick, you know, C-U-N-T in, in front of my idols, <laughs> underwear. <laughs> I thought it was so cool. I like look at Pez and I have a little bit of a chuckle and he's like, ha ha, yeah, so funny guy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that shit was, that shit was awkward. Um, but anyway, we end up getting enough stuff on the stage. We pick it up. We pick, we pick up some of the things. I kind of name a couple of the things that I'd picked up. And in, in the process of naming them, I was also like, holy shit, what, oh, I can run this. Yep, I can run that. Okay, cool. So I'm kind of like, a, there's a little bit of strategy going on. So I kind of turn to talk to Seth. I don't know what I go to say, but basically as I do that, the act starts, the beat is about to drop in. So he knows he's got the timing ready and um, he's got his first four bars set up. So he, so what, how it was going to work was it was going to go Seth, me, uh, Pez. 
four bars, four bars, four bars. We just keep passing it back and forward until basically, um, you know, Seth was kind of like controlling it, I guess, or maybe they had a, a specific time set up, not sure. But basically it goes four, 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 and then we just pass it on. We freestyle about what we see and then we um, try to engage a crowd and then, and then that should be it, right? Seth goes, you know, something about snake oil. And then um, my turn. And, and this is my time to shine, baby. This is my time to, to show these motherfuckers like I'm not just playing. I'm not just playing out here. You know, I'm actually, I put my hand up. I said I'm a rapper, so I'm going to have to rap. All right, this is what this is what happens. Pressure's on. So anyway, the, it comes to me, and I step up to the front of the stage. Um, uh, I, I yo, I can't fucking see far, but in my hand I got two fucking seagulls. <clears throat> and uh, that that was like the first bar that I said because someone threw up um, cigars. Anyway, I start. I, I got my first four bars out. Okay, all right, that's um. Not bad, not bad. You said words at least, right? Pez says some shit. It's fucking, you know, Pez says dope shit. Pez freestyles very well. Both of these guys freestyle very well. But Pez goes, he says dope shit. Comes back around to Seth. He says dope shit. Then this is where it really starts to change. My my second set of four bars. Because the first four could have been a fluke, right? I, I said some shit. It rhymed. That could have been a fluke. Anyone could possibly say four bars off the top of their head. Um, or four lines off the top of their head. But then, um, then it gets to my second lot, right? And then I go, when I have a bunch of drinks, I'm a fighter. Somebody, somebody just threw me a lighter. Now I'm about to light it up like I'm on fire. I'm a rapper. Are you calling me a liar? And when I performed it, I like did it out to the crowd. I'm like, because I step up to the crowd like all big like this. And I'm like, um, when I have a bunch of drinks, I'm a fighter. Somebody, somebody just threw me a lighter. I hold it up to the crowd. Now I'm about to light it up like I'm on fire. And then I go like out to the crowd like this. I'm like, I'm a rapper. Are you calling me a liar? Anyway, when I wrapped those four successive rhyming lines, the crowd went fucking wild. Like whatever crowd there was had just seen this random dude from the crowd stand up on stage, say some shit that actually rhymed with other rappers that were rhyming things, right? So the crowd starts going crazy. And Seth and Seth turns to Pez and he's like, what the fuck? This guy actually raps? And then he kind of puts his arm around me and he's like, ha ha, you fucking sick cunt. And I'm like, ho ho, baby. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so it was a pretty, pretty hectic kind of uh, moment. Anyway, Pez goes, he says he's dope bars. He rhymes four things with Long Island Iced Tea on a, a Rolling Stone. I just said a bunch of shit that rhymes with Rolling Stone. Uh, and that was hectic. And then he, and then it goes back to Seth. And Seth goes, um, and it, it, this is where it gets even crazier. Seth goes, um, you know, he kind of rhymes these things. And, and then the last, the last line, he goes, uh, civilian, my man, where the fuck did you come from? And I, and this is where I start. This is where it gets a little bit weird. And, 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 and I'll probably never know to this day, um, what actually happened in, in Seth's head because, my interpretation of, of the way the next little bit goes is, is that I was just like feeling myself and I started saying a few things and, and I got a little bit cocky maybe. Um, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't trying to, uh, uh, um, I wasn't saying anything. I wasn't trying to be a dickhead, but I, I was just like feeling myself, you know, fucking I'm, I'm off the juice. I'm like on cre I'm on the stage. Like I'm just, you know, I'm just loving life. So I just said, I just said, um, you know, a bunch of a bunch of funny shit at this point, and and whether or not he, you know, felt some kind of way about that, you know, he's totally entitled to because it's his stage essentially. But um, so from there, I kind of go, um, uh, uh, yeah, he he goes, where the fuck did you come from? And I was like, yo, I was just in the front row. I was just here to see you kick your sick flow, and now I'm up on the stage. I'm freestyling shit off my fucking front page. And that was, that was pretty dope. Like I just kind of kept it rolling, kept it rolling. Back to Pez. He kept it rolling. Back to Seth. And at this point, me and Seth kind of start having a freestyle conversation. So he would say stuff about me or to me and I would reply in my four bars. And um, yeah, it kind of, it, it just took on like this whole new life form. It wasn't, it wasn't just like 
two guys on the stage just doing them doing themselves and trying to perform or whatever we were actually having a conversation through our freestyle and like i didn't i did like he was he was very succinct in the way that he was kind of doing it or mine wasn't as clear cut like i would fuck up a few lines you know a few a bit inaudible and shit like that but you know for the most part you could understand the gist of what i was trying to get across and what i was trying to say and and you know if you if you look at the middle and end of, of this this video in this freestyle section as like um, with that with that kind of um, uh, subjectivity, you can see we're actually talking to each other through our freestyle, and it, and and it just kind of takes on this whole new dynamic that makes it like fucking I don't know. Just looking back and reflecting, it, it just makes it so fucking more interesting, right? So he passes it to me. I can't remember what I say. You can watch a video down there, but basically. I, I, I say I say a bit of funny shit like I talk about having a big cock and um and then, and then I go to and then I got to rap I got to my my final bar I got to rap um metal de- metal detector and then I and then I kind of I knew I'm like I can't I can't think of a word for metal detector so I stand at the front of I stand at the front of the crowd and I just look out and I'm like I'm just going to own this moment and I don't have a line for that and then I just stare out into the crowd, like kind of triumphantly, uh, Pez and Pez and Seth, fucking, they start pissing themselves because they were like, uh, "What a dickhead!" But that was kind of funny. Um, so yeah, I just I just owned it, and um, anyway, we finished it up. I, sh- I shook hands with both them guys. Uh, I got to you know chop it up with them a little bit afterwards. I you know just kind of general chatting in the crowd. I remember Seth actually signed a candle for me that I still have somewhere. Um, and then outside, obviously I was chatting to people and I was like, you know, and uh, do you know what? I actually met a couple of dudes that night, um, that I'm, I'm still friends with to this day and that, you know, we, we talk, we talk about that night all the time. Like, um, not all the time, but you know, it gets brought up every, every now and then, you know, Mikey, Mikey, um, MJ and then, uh, and then Evan, you know, every year they kind of like bring it up. Like, Oh, I remember that. I'm like, yeah, I remember that night. Um, but it was just, yeah, it was a lot of fun. I got to kick it, uh, with a few cool, few cool people. And I was just on such a high, you know, I, I went to a cool show. I got to see some of my favorite hip hop acts play. I got on stage with them. I got to share a moment with them. Um, yeah, it was just, it was just a, it was just a wild night. And, um, yeah, something that I'll, I'll cherish forever you know? Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm interested to know, like one day I want to ask Seth what he was thinking. Uh, he probably doesn't remember, but, um, yeah, it'd be, it'd be funny to, it'd be funny to know. And what, what was actually even cooler about it is that, uh, about two years later or maybe three years later, Seth comes to play on the central coast where I'm living and he plays at the entrance leagues club. And, uh, I, I get on the support slot and, um, it, it was cool because he does. I, I opened the show, you know, played my ass off to like a home crowd, and then and then he done the freestyle thing again at the end, and uh, I jumped up and I, you know, I done another freestyle except we're in front of like fucking you know a couple of hundred people this time, uh, and it was at, it was in front of like a home crowd, a lot, a lot more pressure, but fuck, it was yeah, it was a lot of fun. And Seth at the time, I think he was on like a fifty or sixty date tour. Um, that was broken up into two or three parts. It was a massive, massive tour. I think he had Dylan Joel and um, Adrian Eagle on support. It was just, yeah, that, that, was, a, that was a dope night. Um, but what was crazy about that night is that um, someone stole his hoverboard because uh, he had the hoverboard as part of, um, uh, as part of the set uh, for Dear Science and someone at the show nicked it. And, and oh no, it was Ivan Ooze. Ivan Ooze was at that show. It was Ivan who's supporting. Who was the other motherfucker? Because oh, I think Dylan Joel and Adrian Eagle were supporting a fundamental show a little bit later. It was Ivan who's maybe it was just Ivan who's Anyway, Ivan who's was on support for Seth. And I I was the opener. Anyway, someone someone nicked his hoverboard. And me and Ivan, and this is like 10 o'clock at night after the show's wrapping up, we see these dudes like fucking make haste out the side door. Me and Ivan like fucking pew. We uh we shoot across this um we shoot across this car park and we're just chasing these dudes. Anyway, they get they got they got away. They had a huge head start. Um, but that was yeah, that was just wild. Anyway, I I actually 
uh, through friend of friend, I located the hoverboard. And the guy who took it was just like real fucking drunk. He just was like feeling himself and he thought it'd be funny. And it kind of was. Um, but luckily I got the hoverboard back off of um, through, through a friend of a friend. I located it. I got the hoverboard and I actually went and returned it to um, Seth's um, touring manager um, who was, you know, pretty thankful. Um, and only like one or two days later. So yeah, that was – and we just kind of had a, you know, just – weird kind of like you know um we've just had these weird run-ins where you know just different shows and things like that over the over the years but um yeah yeah it was cool anyway i think i'll wrap that up there that's the time that i jumped on stage to freestyle with a couple of my idols and uh yeah i hope you like that one uh drop a comment below i'll, I'll actually link the video and uh, I want you to tell me what you think. Were we, uh, uh, were we battling or was it just freestyle? Were we just chatting through freestyle or was Seth trying to drop some bars on me? Was he trying to put me in my place? Because it could have gone either way. But um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. It, and um, yeah, something that I'll always cherish. Anyway, let me know what you think. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next week on Slap Happy. Peace.